Farms.com Market School with expert commodity analyst Mo Agostino is an online educational video series designed to help you, the farmer, improve your knowledge of grain marketing. Farms.com Market School is brought to you by DeKalb Brand Seeds. DeKalb, growing confidence. Today's video lessons is about how grain prices are determined. Our focus and attention throughout this educational video series will be on commodity grain marketing and risk management. Today's topics include how and where futures contracts are traded, the role of the CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, what factors determine daily price quotes, inverted versus a contango market or full carry, also known as a backwardation market, and does it pay to store grain. Before we start with our topics today, I'd just like to say that marketing is more of an art than a science. It's a marketing game. I hope to teach you the tools and information needed to be a better marketing expert and know how to play this game. Remember, Babe Ruth never batted a thousand, but was one of the very best that ever played the game of baseball. Our first topic today is about how and where grain futures contracts are traded. Not every grain or crop that is grown in the world will have a futures contract that trades on some exchange. Grain prices are determined by buyers and sellers, either on an exchange or as a forward contract. Trading hours for grain futures in Chicago used to trade from 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 2.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Those hours have changed. Now we trade from 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 2.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 18 hours a day. You can get delayed 10-15 minute quotes from www.cmegroup.com or www.farms.com. You can also purchase live quotes from a supplier where you pay a monthly or yearly fee. A futures exchange provides the buyers and sellers a platform to trade that futures contract on a commodity. The past had trading floors with pits in which traders bought and sold futures contracts through an open outcry process since the late 1990s. 75% of the trading volume is now done electronically through computers. The CME bought out the CBOT, Chicago Board of Trade, in 2007. Other exchanges include the MGEX, Minneapolis Grain Exchange, and the ICE Exchange, also known as the Intercontinental Exchange, where canola futures are traded. Our second topic today is the role of exchanges. Exchanges like the CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, not only provide the infrastructure for trading, but they also disseminate price information around the globe. They create and list new contracts, they set the rules and govern trading. They also set position limits, how many contracts can be held in any given moment. They also set price limits, how far up or down a futures contract can trade. For example, corn can trade limit up 40 cents or limit down. That used to be 30 cents. They set marginal requirements, the amount of good faith deposit a farmer needs to put up on a daily basis to honor that futures contract. Typically, that is 5%. They also publish trading statistics such as volume and open interest, also known as the Commitment of Traders Report, which is published weekly. It's a zero-sum game. For every loser, there's a winner and vice versa. At the end of every day, there are debits and credits. The debits equals the losers and the credits equals the winners. Our third topic today is what determines the daily grain price swings. The futures closing quote is usually equal to the view, the sentiment from both the speculator and the hedger based on the supply and demand factors for that commodity. General rule of thumb, higher prices equals shorter supply and more demand, while lower prices equals higher supply and less demand. Fear and greed can also sometimes drive prices near term to extreme levels both up and down. Here's an example of a chart of corn from 2011 to 2014. These are all the outstanding futures contracts. Each commodity will have a futures contract out to the future. However, for example, in corn, it varies for um, with a March, a May, July, September, and December futures contract. There is, if you notice, no January corn futures contract. If selling corn in January, it will be matched to the nearest futures contract, in this case, March. Basis will then be added or subtracted to arrive at a net price per bushel. Our fourth topic today is about inverted markets versus a contango, full carry, or also known as a backwardation market. We're going to cover basis a little bit more in detail in a further video, but for now, a narrow or positive basis is equal to a supply shortage or deficit, which simply means an inverted market. That means that futures in the nearby contracts are higher than the deferreds. A wide or negative basis is equal to a surplus or abundance of supply, which is again equal to a contango, full carry, or backwardation 
market. Let's look at an example. This is corn, again, the 2011 futures contracts all the way out to 2014. And if you notice in this example, you can see that the deferred future contract months have no carry. This is an inverted market as deferred future months are lower than the near my contracts. The markets are worried about not having enough bushels to meet demand, thereby pushing prices higher short term nearby to ration that demand, thus signaling to the farmer to sell those bushels. In our wheat example, deferred future months have a full carry. In other words, higher prices to compensate for the cost to carry that commodity out for six months. The carrying costs include financing, storage, shrink, insurance, to store or hold that grain out six months. For example, if in January the cost to store U.S. wheat bushels in your bin is five cents per bushel per month or 30 cents per bushel, the six month Ford futures price in Chicago should equal 7.96 per bushel, which is where futures are at, plus the 30 cents, the cost to store that grain for six months, or US 826. In our July futures contract, we're trading at 8.47 per bushel. The market is signaling to the producer to store his or her wheat today and sell in six months time. Our last topic today is about storage, and you can see from our last topic that it doesn't always pay to store a grain. Classic example is the 2012 December corn futures chart when corn futures went to all-time record highs of 849 a bushel because of the 2012 US drought. Storing corn bushels at seven bucks a bushel or 750 or eight or wheat at nine or soybeans at 17 bucks a bushel just doesn't make any sense. Only store when you have book forward at higher prices or when the market has a full carry and it's paying you to store those bushels into the future. Once a farmer has a basic understanding how these grain prices are determined, you can call your local elevator on that date. You can price the futures, determine the basis and the time of delivery. Thank you for spending some time with us today and we hope that you've learned something about how grain prices are determined. We look forward to seeing you next time.